Hey guys, this is Jess Birkin. I am here with your latest um, tech practice brief. And today we are gonna be talking about claiming your Google My Business listing. If you're interested in learning more about all of these topics, connect with me here at my website, hackyourpractice.lawyer. Let's jump in. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is your Google My Business listing and what does it matter? Google My Business is basically your online sort of um, Google Yellow Pages version. We all know when you go to Google Maps and click on things, you can find businesses and everybody ha that has a business listing lists their website and directions and you can share it to your friends when you're going to meet there and you can see how, what their office hours are. So here I have pulled up um, on an incognito tab my my law firm's search results on Google. And so here we can see that um, I come up, my firm, Birkin Law Office, is a law firm serving nonprofits, foundations and the arts. And then over here on this side of the page, we see this Google Maps listing. Now, the only way to make this appear for your law firm's listing is to actually go ahead and fill out and claim your Google My Business listing. So if you have a new law firm, Google may not even know that you exist. You may not even be on the map. And so if someone is trying to come to your office and they're using Google Maps to try and find you, it can be a little bit challenging for them. And we don't want that. We don't want challenges. We want our clients to have an easy time finding us, right? So having this piece here show up is super important. Um, and as you can see, that's really like a key piece of the search results. So the things that are at the very top of any Google search page is the most relevant search, which of course is my own website. But then the second most relevant thing in Google's perspective is the place. And so having the place be on a map is given very preferential treatment. And anytime you're searching for what we would call a head term, um, let's just say uh, you're looking for Minneapolis nonprofit attorney. Here we can see the map is the very first result on anything. Um, and my good friend Emily is coming up as rubric legal because she is a nonprofit attorney located in Minneapolis. So that is very important from a competitive standpoint that you want to be in this top area. Okay, so how do you make this appear? I've been working with a colleague, Sarah, who volunteered to have me go ahead and claim her Google My Business listing just so I could make this video for you. So I just wanna show the difference between what happens when we search for Birkin Law, my law firm, versus Van Norman Law. So Sarah, um, Sarah is great and she's got a great website and we've, we've made everything really shine. But what happens when we search for Sarah's law firm, this is what comes up. Now, Sarah is not a criminal defense attorney. She is not located in Scottsdale, Arizona, and this is not her location. But the only other Van Norman law firm in the country that has a Google My Business listing is in Arizona. So Google is smart enough to know that I'm sitting in Minnesota. My IP address is registering for the search engine but it can't give me a result that makes any sense location-wise, so it's giving me the Arizona physical address. Now you can see, oh, here's Sarah. Sarah's right down here, but she's not appearing as the top physical result because she doesn't actually have this thing filled out. So um, what we're gonna do today is actually go ahead and fill that out. Um, and I'll just show you one more thing. If you search for me, and I think it's important to talk about searching for the lawyer because especially for solos, but really it doesn't matter what size firm you're with, when somebody is thinking about hiring you, um, whether they're looking at your firm, whether they're looking at you, they're, if they're thinking about you, they wanna know who you are as a human being. And so the reputation of your firm matters, yes, but don't be silly and think that they're not actually like searching for you as a person. So this is what happens when you search for me as a person. If you type in 
Jess Birkin into an incognito tab of Google, what comes up? Well, my, my law firm, my about page, here's my Twitter, which is super fun. You should totally go over there and connect to me on Twitter because we have a lot of fun on legal Twitter. Um, then it goes to my LinkedIn page and all my authoring at lawyerists, my listings that I'm speaking at tech show, right? Then it goes into pictures. So you really want to have good search results come up and guess what is one of the top things because Google prefers to give you its own content. So of course my name is affiliated with my law firm. And so my geographic business listing is at the top of the page, okay? So th this is helping me for people who search for my business, but also for people who are just searching for me personally. So let's see what happened with Sarah's. Here we can see Sarah Van Norman. Now Sarah's, she didn't just fall off the turnip truck, okay? She's been practicing for over 10 years. I think she's probably been out a little bit longer than me. So maybe up to 15 years. She's fantastic at her job. She's just started a new firm. And from the looks of this, um, there's just nothing here. And um, these are all great results. Here's her old firm. Here's her LinkedIn page. Here's her about page. But the perception is that something is missing. And it is. She should have a Google My Business listing for her firm right here. So we are going to go ahead and make that and show you how it's done. Okay, so to claim your Google My Business listing, the first thing you're going to need to do is um, go to google.com slash business. Now, one of the things to think about as you're doing this is what Gmail account are you using to manage this? Now, um, I had Sarah go ahead and create a Gmail account for her law firm so that she's managing her business separately than she is managing her maybe her personal email. Um, so that's just one sort of like pro tip is that, you know, create a Gmail account for free. I have one that's like Birkin Law, and that's what I use to manage my YouTube channels and all of that stuff. So um, just keep that in mind that when you go into this, you may want to have a separate Gmail account so that when you're responding to people's reviews and other things like that, that you can do it from a professional account, not from your personal email. They don't show your personal email, but... I just think it's cleaner. All right, so first we're gonna say sign in and we're gonna uh, see now you can see that other guy's thing comes up. All right, so we're just gonna put in the name of the business and then we're gonna say create a business with this name. Now we're just gonna fill in some of this data. So here I've entered in her address and zip code and then this is um, not really relevant to a law firm. We're just picking a category. I'm just typing in and Google already knows what a law firm is. So that's great. We're going to go with that. And I'm just going to go ahead and plug in the rest of this data and continue on our way. So we just click next. All right, so now we just click finish. So this is the part that's kind of a drag because you can't do it all in one shot. You will need to have your postcard mailed to you. And um, then you have to log back in and verify. But that doesn't mean that we can't continue filling it out. It just means it won't be verified until you get the postcard in the mail. So we put our name in and a postcard is coming to the address that we said was the address of our business. And that's all good. So now this is the dashboard for the Google My Business listing. Um, so really, like once you've gotten in here, you've basically created your listing. And as you can see, there's this little chart here that sort of guides you on your percent completion. So the thing that you want to do is you don't want to stop here. And what happens for a lot of lawyers is they do this. Then they're like, oh, that postcard's got to come. And then they just sort of get busy and forget about doing it. But you really, really need to fill out your GMB, Google My Business listing completely because it's really going to give you an SEO boost and it's going to help your clients find you and say good things about you. So let's go ahead and get started with creating some of these items.
as you can see, it's pretty easy to just go through and toggle the buttons. So here you can see now Sarah's got some hours. And, you know, maybe she stays open till 6, or maybe she's got one day that she's closed. This is a great way to communicate. Um, I've worked with attorneys who've had sort of like a medical issue where they need to work half time. And this is a great way to communicate in advance that you're not necessarily open, you know, seven days a week, 24-7, right? It's all about creating those messages to create the life that you love living as a lawyer, not just uh, thinking about this as a business listing, but as a way to start communicating your boundaries also. Special hours is a way to communicate that you are not open for holidays. We can go ahead and say whether we're open on MLK Day or not. My guess is that Sarah, like most lawyers, is probably open. Um, but maybe, let's say she's going to be closed on Thanksgiving this year. Super easy. So you can just go through, and also throughout the year, uh, Google will prompt you to update your hours for holidays. So here we've updated Sarah's with some uh, Sarah's firm with some holiday hours to give her at least a few days off throughout the year. Obviously, you want to have your website, and if you have a scheduling page, if you use Acuity Scheduling for booking online consultations, like I do, you're going to want to go ahead and put that link here because, as you can see. In my Google business listing right here, if somebody's already ready to book a consultation with me, let's not create a bunch of friction. Let's just get them to that page immediately. So if you use online scheduling and if you don't, feel free to check my YouTube channel for more videos about how to set that up. Um, but that's really a great idea. And Google's really hip to the fact that it's trying to get your business done as quickly as and efficiently as possible because they know they're going to serve up this content as the first result. So now let's go ahead and add some descriptive words and attributes. So here you can see there are a few attributes you can pick from depending on whether you're veteran owned or veteran managed, women led, LGBTQ friendly, etc. Okay, so here we have a brief description of the business. And what you want to remember is, yeah, you want to have some keywords in here, but you do not want to just stuff this section with keywords. You want to write in English. Remember that human beings are reading this, and this is your first opportunity for people to get to know you. So deliver something that's concise and shows off who you are. Here we add the date that the business was opened. In Sarah's case, it was not that long ago, just October of 2018. Now let's add some photos. It's super easy to do. Um, you're, you do need to verify your business before the photos will appear, but we can go ahead and upload them uh, at any point. So just make sure that you don't forget to get that postcard and get verified. Okay, so we added a few photos for Sarah's profile. So she'll have a profile small inset and a larger cover and a picture of Sarah. So that's a great way to get started. Of course, you can add lots of things like interior office uh, outside of the building, which is super helpful for finding your location. And then obviously video, Google loves that. Okay, so we've got everything, uh, all the basics filled out. And then other things uh, you just need to wait to get verified in order to be able to get into your insights. And then also you need to be verified to get Google reviews, which are obviously super important. You want to get those Google reviews that helps um, your future clients know what your, you know, credibility is. And then if you want to, you can actually have messaging set up so that you can respond to people who have questions um, basically through chat, through text, and they don't get a copy of your number. So um, that's pretty handy. And then, of course, on the messaging, you have to be willing to actually answer in a timely fashion. So don't turn that on if you're not going to be staffing it or paying somebody else to staff it. 
Then we've got users. Now, if you're working with a marketing person or you have maybe a paralegal or some other staff or consultant that you're working with, it's very easy to just add them as another user and you can set their ability to, um, you can restrict their ability to manipulate your account. So that's a really great feature. Then if you have multiple locations, multiple offices, of course you can add a new location, you can manage your locations, you can verify your locations. And then linked accounts is to connect like your Google Analytics and other um, Google related accounts through here. And then of course the gear wheel always means settings. So for the settings, um, just bear in mind, again, if this is you're using your personal email, just remember that your personal email is going to be getting all these updates. Um, I would just go ahead and leave all of the updates checked and then you can see if anything becomes annoying for you. Um, most of the time you're going to want to know about changes to your listing reviews, all those things. So I would just err on the side of opting out if and when they become an irritation. And then it is a great idea to go ahead and get the Google My Business mobile app because it's just super easy to manage everything from your phone, including creating posts. Um, and one thing to bear in mind when you create posts is that posts on Google My Business do seem to expire. Um, and I think that is Google's way of trying to get everybody to keep posting on there. But it's, uh, it's just a fair warning that posting to your Google My Business is great, but it's not set it and forget it. They don't just live forever. They do sort of time out and you'll need to refresh your account with new posts um, from time to time. Okay, so that is pretty much the 101 and how to go claim your Google My Business listing and set it up. Um, Obviously, that is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to managing your Google uh, accounts and your SEO, but it is sort of the bottom level, super basic 101. And if you haven't claimed your Google My Business listing, I think let, now you know how to do it. So um, go ahead and let me know if you have any questions. You can leave comments in the video or you can connect to me here on my website, uh, join the crew get involved with Hack Your Practice and improve your, your lawyer life. Um, it's been great and we'll see you in the next Tech Practice Brief.